we were on our way out because we knew that we had to be back there quickly. Um, walked past Brad. He had prayed with a gentleman um, he, to be saved, and the fact that he asked afterward, could he, did he have any illness or anything that we could pray for? And the guy said, yes, he had pain in his eye. So Brad said, okay, on a scale from 1 to 10, what is your pain right now? And he said, 10. And they prayed, and it brought it down to a 5, and it's like, okay, we don't want that still. You know, and so they had prayed, and it came down to where the pain was gone. Um, I had tried to take a video. I don't know what happened with my phone, but it doesn't matter. I, I'm, not, I'm over it. The guy was, um, you know, he was happy, and he was very grateful. And it ended up being because, okay, Satan, you're not getting to me. We went back to take the video, couldn't find him. But his family that was there was three elderly ladies. Two of them prayed to be saved, and one's having surgery. So um, we prayed for that. And uh, we went to Heaven Sent the, in the mall. And these two really nice looking guys received us well and prayed to be saved. And well, guess what? I wanted the picture under Heaven Sent. So. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. so we and, were Heaven Sent. Yeah. And we're, you know, we're going to go on, but you guys, we've got so much to be thankful for. Oh, Amen. Amen. We do. Amen. Hallelujah. Got the total. Um, so when we first got to Walmart, I was with the group who went to Walmart, and I really thought the Lord said red pants. And at first I was like, okay, what does that mean? Is it like on the hanger, someone wearing red pants, guys or girls? You know, like totally overthinking it. And so I was like, red pants, man, red pants. And I couldn't really, I never really found the red pants. And so um, my partner was like, oh, the Lord wants to do this person, that person. So I just went with it and ministered to a lot of different people. And then Right as we were walking out, um, she passed someone in uh, like a wheel wheelchair thing, and she's like, oh, we need to pray for that person. And so we stopped, and we went, and I looked down, and she's wearing red pants. <laughs> I was like, okay, red pants, you got this. This is good. And so I just wanted to share that testimony right there. So. <laughs> Praise God. Before, but only one was available, so we talked to her. And then when she prayed, she said, you made my day. Amen. I was like, glory to God. But at the same time, her, the other three came, and there was a girl with tattoos, and we ministered. I kind of were like, like waiting. I said, you know, like, I don't want this. But we still, I said, yeah, and share with them the scriptures and all that. And one of the teenagers came and sat in front of me on the stairs. And so the lady with the tattoos, when I say, pray, please repeat with me, she's like, no, no. So I went to the teenager, and he did. And then Praise there was a big brother there with the phone, and I go, and you two, come and pray with me. <laughs> and he did pray. I mean, I, I was telling Liz, don't be intimidated. He looks so big, and all that. I was like, he was not intimidated. But he did pray. Amen. And the, the girl the say, you made my day. She was like so happy. Praise God. I know, God is so Amen. good. What a Amen. blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. One more testimony, then we'll, you guys are on fire. Okay, I went out on the van with uh, Peter. He drove us out on the van to the project. And so I first paired up with Virginia. And so when we first got out there, three of the guys that we met, they were sitting out on the porch. And so we came to them, told them that we're here from KCM. And the guys got so excited on behalf of we had came there from KCM. And they were so excited that we was on the ground. And they knew Brother Copeland. They Sweet. knew on behalf of the ministry. And they were like, wow, we're so glad that KCM came here. They're calling out other churches that had came through there. And they're like, wow, KCM had came here to our area. So Amen. they were excited. Well, by the way, all three of those guys received Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, <laughs> one of the guys, we prayed for him on behalf of his marriage. The other guy, we prayed for him because he had had a stroke. And the other guy, we just prayed for general, where he was concerned. Amen. And then the second one was that we was walking, and we saw two little young guys sitting out on the steps of their house. And so we ministered to them. Both of them stepped to Christ as their Lord and Savior. And then one of the guys started asking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So we talked to him about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We laid hands on him, and both guys received the baptism of the Holy Praise Spirit. Praise and now, when we was on the van on our way coming back to here, uh, Peter came around the corner to bring us back into the front of the building. And at that time, there was a young man sitting on the uh, sidewalk. And so when I looked out there and saw him, Trevor was like in the center of me, and then it was Virginia on the side of him. And then I turned to Trevor, and I said, well, you saw the guy over there? He said, yeah, I saw him also. I said, we want to go talk to him? I said, he's too close to our door for us not to talk to him. And so therefore, <laughs> once Peter had stopped and we got off, Trevor and I walked back over there. We talked to the young man, and he received Christ at his person, Lord, and said, y'all Praise God. <laughs> I'll make it really quick. 
And so this one lady I went to and I asked her about, you know, um, is she from the area? She went to church. She said, yes, I'm in the church and, and I've been saved for 40 years. And so I go on and I talk to her about it and then she starts telling me her testimony of some things that happened to her in her life and how she came to Christ, how she found him, how they've been together. And then she took me by hand. She says, and I have, I have a message for you. And she flip-flopped it all the way around, and she actually had prophesied on me. <laughs> yes. And she prophesied on me and what I was doing. And um, we talked for a while, ended up hugging each other, and, and she said that that was really great. What I'm doing, I'm doing great works, and it's big things for me. And she went on and on, and Praise it was God. amazing. Praise God. <laughs> Will y'all close that door back there? We couldn't go. We didn't. We went to the hospital, and we just were feeling a little crowded out and went to ER, so we started heading down the hill and were led to go to a subway. And uh, we go on the subway, and I was remembering what Riley said, the stuff I learned this week is stick to the card, stick to the card, shut up, be, stick to the card. Yeah, the other is buy something. If you're going in a place, get something. So I'm like, oh, there's very little cash left. But hungry, thirsty, tired. So I go in, and I'm like, I think I'll have money for Coke. So I get my dad Coke, yeah, yeah. I go to the counter. She's like, that's 216. I'm like, 216? Open my wallet. All Open my wallet. All I have in my wallet is two dollars and sixteen cents. And I said, "Well, this is your day, Ebony." Ebony got saved right there. Gave him my thing. And meanwhile, behind me, Ronky is. Uh oh, praise God! This is my first time of coming to Fort Worth, so and I came by myself. So I was like, "Okay, how to come to this?" I've been to DC, and I've always wanted to go to Riley's uh, Evangelist uh, Outreach, but it's like it's difficult to get the time. So. Today, when I went out with Elizabeth, I was so excited when they said, hospital, I work in the hospital, and I don't witness, but the card is so important. Because I came on Tuesday, and then I said, I, I got to go back for the preaching. So later, I said, okay, I got to witness to somebody. And I was driving home, like, my hotel is like 50 minutes. So I'm like, on my way, I'm like, oh, I need to get something. This is like almost 11 o'clock. And I saw it was a Muslim guy who was... You know, his Quran was ready, and I bought this. And as I was going to let my spirit, I go back and talk to him. So I'm like, Oh, do you live in this? Area? I just take to the car. It's like, No, do you go to church? I'm like, okay. It's like, No, I can hear this. I said, Okay, can you say that? I said, Romans 3 say, I just went through the car. And I'm like, Can you say this prayer now? It's like, Okay, oh, give me the card. And he read the card himself, prayed it, and wrote it, and took everything, and wrote his name. And I'm like, like no, thank you. Because I was coming out of the air, there was this guy, like a drunken guy. I'm like, OK, like trying to get money. I'm like, I'll talk to him. But then it's like, oh, I bought stuff for those guys there. I'm like, OK, it's like, well, I'm buying myself. So I'm like, I went to them. They're like kind of like eating. I'm like, oh, do you guys live here? Yeah, do you go to church? No, oh, you know, Romans 3 said this, Romans 6 said this. I said, will you say this prayer with me? One of them did. The other one is like, no, I don't need it, blah, blah. I said, I said the other one was, I said, write your name. He took it and said, oh, no, I don't want to write my name. I said, okay, we already saved. God bless you. So I said, okay, I'm leaving. And there was this truck. They like taco. The guy said, I can go get something there to eat. I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat. So I said, okay, let me just go see what they The guy that refused to say the prayer before came behind me again. He's like, okay, what were you talking about again? And then he ended up saying the prayer, gave his time to Jesus, signed the card and everything. So today I just want to thank God. When we went out, we were walking. We were at the emergency. She prayed for somebody with a back pain who already gave his life. And as we're going down the road, we're like, kind of like, okay, where do we go from here? And my spirit is that, you know, we came for healing ministry in this area. The people that need healing today, be patient, God will do it. So he said, okay, let's go get something. And then we got to this subway and there was two copy. I'm like, okay. And Lord, like my spirit, go back and I talk to him. I know we're saved. I said, okay. And they can't, you know, they said they're saved. They believe Jesus said, oh, can't want to fight. How's your fire for the Lord? He said, oh, we're fine. Like, okay, praise God, you know. And then I'm like, oh, do you guys need prayer? I said, yes, I need prayer. I have cancer in my throat and cancer in my you neck. See. And you can see the cancer. I'm like, wow. I'm like, you know, the Bible said that by stripes, we're already here. And so we right there, I lay on the phone them and I pray for them. And I told them, you know, you got to be here tonight. To get everything you need to say. praise yeah. the Lord. Yeah. 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 We end up talking, and I was telling her my testimony how the Lord restored me back 2002 from mosquit sickness and diseases, and now I'll be following the ministry, and I don't have to take any medication. And so we end up talking, and she was telling me about her back and stuff like that. And now sometimes she has to do, you know, exercise. And I'm like, and I said, look, 
I think we're here for you today. The devil must take you and you don't need to drop, finish it. It's not your exercise, it's not your aerobic, it's not. You have to take what Jesus did, and then the devil will not keep on bringing you back to the point of sleeping. And so we just pray. Pray for you. I'd like to just say how amazing just sticking straight to that card is. I've never seen anything so efficient. I had the last year after I surrendered, a lot of times people, I would give them tracks all the time, but I wasn't leading it to the Lord, so I wasn't going through the, what they needed to be led to the Lord. I just hand out tracks. Because before that, I was to a soul winning class years ago, talked about giving your testimony and doing all this. Thank you. That, 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 would, that would take probably like 20 minutes to go through with someone. And so it kind of made me look much more hesitant to, to do that. And so on today was the second day I went out. And then just sticking to that card, is it's perfect. And it, it gives you exactly what, what the, they're receiving, exactly what they need. And for me, on the card, I would actually just show them the verses the, and the three. And then they'd see specifically this came right out of the Bible, the verses. And then today, the couple ladies, when I asked them to pray with me, I'd say Heavenly Father, and then I'd have to say more. They just they just read it right off that card, and they were so you could just tell the Holy Spirit was working in them as they were just reading it. So the the card is great, and I just encourage y'all to stick with it and praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Sure, I don't need that. You know me. So, <laughs> I mean, she made sure she had my phone number, so she is taking it back. You know, so. Um, and that's with anybody that has my phone number, call me. Let me know if you need any help. But anyways, we were. Um, the girl back there. Oh. What? Did somebody call my name? She wanted to know your name. Oh, oh, okay, okay. And she she filled somebody right up. The fullness of the Holy Spirit, not just welcome Holy Spirit, but she filled them right up in front of the hospital, right there at the doors, and he got filled with the Holy Spirit. Wow. <laughs> and then um, there was a man in the Lord told me to go up to where we were led right to him because I was going to our court steps to order of the Lord. And so we ran up to these guys that were, you know, loading a truck. And um, so he got saved. And um, But then I said, do you need a healing? And see, last night I received mine and I had the fire back here in my back, in my kidneys, wow. my pancreas. And so it was diabetes. And I'm like, I need to sow a seed for this, you know. So I laid my hands, not just that, but, you know, right. saying you sow with right. me, you know. And so I laid, uh, laid, we laid, I laid hands. We all did. And, um, and then I said, is there anything else? He said, well, I need a healing in my back. And so I laid my hands there, and, he's, and I said, how's that feel? And he says, it's, it's a little better. And I said, okay, well, let me pray again. So I prayed on his back again. He says, yeah, it's better. He went down, touched his knees, and he was doing good. <laughs> and then I was realigning his words. You know what I'm saying? Because he just got saved. He didn't know that he should say this and shouldn't say that. So it was funny because I had a video, but it didn't take. So and he, he was telling you, you could have, should have seen him how expressive he was and how excited he was Praise about his healing. God. So it was pretty cool. Amen. Amen. My name is Grace, and this is the first time I've done this. So I was like, this card's got to work because I don't. <laughs> <laughs> the first lady I went up to, I asked her, I said, if you were to die today, where would you go? And she said, hmm, I don't know. I, she says, well, I guess heaven. I said, so if God came to the door, what would he say to you? What would you say to him? She goes, I don't know. Let me in. I said, yeah. So then I just started reading the card. And I said, well, we're going to say this prayer. And she started saying it. I was like, oh, this works. <laughs> <laughs> she just started saying it. You know, and her eyes got teary and everything. I was like, oh, yeah, it works. <laughs> so there was another lady, and she says, oh, I'm born again. And she, I said, well, you're in a, I said, you look like you're in pain. She goes, yeah, I'm in pain. I said, well, let me pray for you. So we prayed for her. She said it was her knee. So we prayed for her, and she was limping. And uh, so when we prayed for her, then she said, I feel like I can run up that hill. I said, well, run up that hill. She says, well, I'll just walk up the hill. I said, well, let's go up the hill. So the three of us went up that hill. And she said, oh, she, she started crying, and she was doing this, and she was she was like, oh, Amen. that's great. That's great. Well, anyway, we got 12 people saved today. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Ma'am, you said you never done this before. Right. Does the card work now? Yeah. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I wanted to just... Uh, 
give a testimony, um, just a brief one. Uh, but first of all, just the encouragement of um, the, the group here, and um, you know, today I was, <clears throat> you know, uh, doing some devotions there at Starbucks. I saw Donna there, really encouraged me to come back. You know, uh, but I went to the uh, service and I realized that this is where I needed to be. And uh, Nathan encouraged me also. And uh, so I'm really thankful for that. And the fact that uh, as, uh, Ken Copeland brought out that the woman with the issue of blood, you know, we usually think, well, we want to wear the tallit, you know. But she actually, uh, seeing the fact that she got out into the streets, that was her healing. And I think that's a key point. But my testimony briefly was um, after kind of a, well, anyway, basically I was just uh, at, at, at Hilton, um, over at the Hilton Hotel there, and, uh, you know, getting some, some uh, provisions or some things there. And um, so the clerk there was kind of processing, an Indian guy. And, uh, you know, I was just waiting for the moment there, the little oscillation there where to talk to him. And by the way, I'm believing for this to come back big time. Evangelism explosion in the Presbyterian Church because they were involved in the Second Great Awakening. But anyway, but uh, and also um, in uh, Korea and so forth. But I wanted to pray uh, or just mention that uh, with this individual then, um, he was saying, <clears throat> um, you know, I waited for that oscillation, and he finally said, well, Mr. Peter, is there anything else I can uh, do for you? And I just began to just, the next thing I knew, I was saying, well, if you died today, sir, do you know uh, for sure that you'd go to heaven? And he, he didn't, and so I was able to just pray the prayer with him, but he's an Indian individual, his name is Abijah, something like that, Abijah. So I'm very thankful for that, and the healing anointing also. Amen. 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 Lord, we thank you that Abijah is saved. Maybe you didn't get this information from last night from the band. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been uh, uh, from Arkansas. I came over here yesterday and decided to get on the evangelism team. And I went out with Stephen and he and I went out around the parking lot and witnessed this four, five, six, seven, eight people. And we sold, we got, we caught some fish. We caught four yesterday, yeah. Stephen, yeah. didn't we? Mm -hmm. The other day we went out and Eric caught Colorado, we caught five more. So wow. We started about that. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't want to catch too many because, uh, you know, when I'm a natural fisherman, uh, sitting back here a while ago, I said, I'm not going to testify, but you know, I got excited here and all the <laughs> Anyway, we're overcome by the blood of the Lamb and order of our testimony. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Preach it, brother. Yeah, and, uh, my, my fishing buddy from Arkansas just rung my telephone, and my buzzer went off in here, and my, my uh, phone and started tickling my leg. And I said, well, hello. He said, this is Frank. I said, are you catching it? He said, you catching any fish? Oh. I said, yeah, I just caught eight <laughs> this week. He said, where are you fishing at? I said, down here in Fort Worth. <laughs> and I'm in Blivers Convention, Kenneth Copeland Convention down here. And we've been out on the street and went sold. And so, anyway, one good thing about this kind of fishing I don't have to clean them. The Lord has to clean them. <laughs> Did you know that's my kind of fishing? Yeah. yeah. We don't have to get dirty. Yeah. We just catch them, reel them in. Yep. And did you know? Did you know that when Jesus healed the 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 man um, that had the the lepers? You know what? I'm trying that slipped my mind. What was that? The man with all the demons, and he demoniac. cast him in the, the pig. Yes. 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 Um, he, yeah, the demoniac. He wanted to follow Jesus. If you read that passage, he wanted to follow Jesus, and Jesus said, "No, you go to yeah, you go tell." I forget if the name of it. It was ten cities, and Jesus, Decapolis, yeah. That is that means ten cities. So he made that man an instant evangelist. Before he was ever cleaned up. Mm. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise God. Uh, I actually got uh, separated from my group while I was moving. We were down to the station. And uh, so I thought they went down the road because I couldn't find them. So as I was walking down, there's a gentleman who was just standing outside smoking, I guess on a break or something. And I was like, well, this car is not so long, so I could go through it real quick and, you know, talk to him, ask him if he was around here. He said, no, he's just in the area doing some work and asked me at the church. He said, I think he said yes or not. I don't know what he said. 
But then I asked him, uh, when then? Mm -hmm. So I mentioned the scripture. So it would, actually, if he would die, where, where would he go? He said, well, I would hope heaven. So uh, I was like, well, I mentioned the scriptures in Romans 3 and Romans 6 and Romans 10. And uh, asked him to pray and uh, put his cigarette away, threw it away. And uh, he ended up praying. And uh, he wouldn't fill out the card or anything like that. He said, I said, well, I have a church that I go to uh, back in Arizona. And I, I followed with them. So I said, okay, good to go. And then he walked back in the building uh, where he was in. Uh, but just to see how he kind of just transitioned that quick. And he plugged that cigarette out. And it, the car was pretty simple <laughs> to the point. Um, next person I encountered was down by the police central station down the road. And uh, it's a guy that was sitting in the car just letting someone go into the police station. And uh, I ended up uh, come walking up to him. He was like, I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I thought he thought I was going to ask for money or something. And I was like, no, I, was, I don't want any money. I was like, I don't want anything from you. I want to get something to you. And so I started asking him the questions, you know, uh, with him from around here. He said, yeah. You know, I said, hey, do you want, you know, do you have a church around here? He said, you know, yeah. And I said, if you die, where do you go? He said, hell. And I was like, okay. Now he was like, I was expecting to hear. So then I was like, why do you say? He's like, I'm I sinned, and you know, and so I had to, you know, I mentioned the scriptures to him, but I had so also had to mention to him that, you know, I said, I'm, I know I'm going to heaven, but not because of, you know, anything I've done, but because of Jesus Christ, and that's who believed, and so then he was like, I don't believe that, so I was like, okay, the car doesn't mention this, so, um, so then I had to break away from the car, and, and he said, I got my Bible right here, so he pulled out the Bible out of his armor, I was like, okay, so I said, well, look in your Bible. I said, go, go, go ahead to, uh, go, go to um, Romans 10, 9, and 10. So he went Amen. to Romans 10, 9, and 10. I said, go Galatians chapter 2, ver uh, verse 8 and 9. So he went and read it. He said, I said, you see the Bible? He said, he said yeah. I said, yeah, the Bible is right. The Bible is right. And so then uh, he moved from apprehension to opening up. Amen. And uh, he, I said, pray this prayer with me. So I pray off the card. I kind of forgot what it says. So I said, hold on one second. So I, you know, he prayed. Back to the card. Back to the card. He prayed and everything like that. Amen. And he opened up. And uh, he, I said, anything I can pray with you about? He's like, no, at first. And then I noticed someone went to the station. He just opened up, started telling me his whole life story, gave me his Praise number, God. told me to call him, gave and took Praise my God. number and all that good stuff. So awesome time. Awesome time. God. Praise God. Praise when I came on Sunday to attend the work and volunteer um, meeting, I joined the usher. But I dreamt in the night that he ought to be in the altar ministry. So I came looking for him. And eventually, I got him with my husband and he said, You can join, you can join us. And so when he talked about the card, I look at the card. So back then in Nigeria, we do street evangelism, but you know, Many a times we give stories about our past life. We tell people, this is me, and are you like that? When to come to Jesus, and eventually we might just save a soul or two. You know, and then when he, I got home that night, I said, let me talk to my son. My son lives in the parsonage. He do everything like a Christian, but he is in the university. So I called him, I said, how are you? He said, fine. If Christ comes today, where will you go to? He said, Mommy, hell. I said, Wow, hell? He said, Yes, Mom. I was shaking. I ministered to him and he gave his life. Oh, praise God. Amen. The day before, I said, Ah, oh, let me talk to his roommate. I have his roommate yes. brother. So that's why he's growing in the Lord. His roommate will not be pulling him down. Amen. So I called the roommate. He also said, I'm going to hell. Ah, I said, God, what is this? I ministered to him and say again he gave his life. And so yesterday when we were um, during the break time, some, something just came to my mind. I was out there under the sun. I remember one of my junior brother that joined courts. He's a court guy and he's in South Africa. So I tried to call him. And when we were talking to he said, oh my. Because every time I would pray for him, he said, you just need to give your life. I've talked stories and stories, and it's still like that. But I used the card yesterday. I said, David, do you know I met a guy at this conference, and his name is Evangel Israeli, and he said, I should give you a message. He said, what? You mean in the U.S.? What message? I want to hear that. <laughs> and while I was talking with him, he eventually gave his life. Oh, so praise God. Happy. Y'all that were in the van, the group, did 
Don't give your numbers to Allison. Yeah, the only yeah. thing is, anybody in the van, did you lead anybody to the Lord this, today? Hey, this group can get it walking out the door. Amen. Amen. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are on fire. Kenny Mike, you want to give one? That's so cool. Are we going to start? <laughs> okay. So me and Kenny Mike, we went in the van and we were starting to go out and he just had it, uh, he was led to go into a store. It was like a music store. So they were selling like CDs, like worldly CDs and stuff like that. So he just had it to go in there. And we went in there, we were looking for someone. We didn't find anyone in there. So we're like, Lord. And Kenny came back, he's looking around. He's like, I, 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 don't, see, you know, I don't see anyone. So we, we looked and then around a, a beam, he saw someone. And then after he saw, uh, there's a lady, her name is Mariah. And he was just, he was just, he went up right up to her and he just took his card out. And then he started going through the approach. And as he got to, the, if you were to die today, and you, are you 100% sure you go to heaven? And she was like, you know, I think so. And then he said, um, if God were to say, why should I let you, what would you tell him? And then she was like, um, you know, I don't, I don't really know. You know, I, I, right when she said that, she said, I feel unworthy. And I, I just felt, so, we both felt the compassion of God just rise over us like that. We were sent just for that one person Amen. to receive Jesus. And she prayed, she received Jesus, and we prayed with her afterwards. And we just sensed the peace of God into her life, into her heart. And she has... Um, a reverend in her family too, so we know how much more that was God and getting her right on the path that God wants her on. That's great. That's great. Hallelujah. Okay, so yesterday I was going to get ice and it's on the even floors, four. And we always go to four, and I thought, oh, go to two this time. So I'm like, all right. So I'm like, I need some tracks for one of them outside the room. So I grab some tracks, and I go down to two. And I'm looking, I'm like, where's your ice machine? And they go, well, we'll check. And the guy looks, and they go, oh, you don't have it on this floor. And all of a sudden, I see these construction guys coming out. I'm like, oh, this is good. <laughs> so the elevator opens, and a, and a bunch of construction guys. So I ask, well, how do I get out of here? So the elevator opens, a bunch of construction guys. I said, I jump in and I ride with them downstairs and I go, uh, English or Spanish? And the guy goes, English. So I lead two guys to, to the Lord in English. Then we hop off and I go, Spanish, right here. And so they come over and three guys pray to, to get saved in Spanish. And then the elevator door comes open again and three more guys come out. I'm like, Spanish? They're like, yeah. So I pray with them in Spanish. So I'm like, this is cool. I'm like, oh my gosh, I just found like a gold mine. <laughs> So we wanted to go back this morning, but we missed the time when they were there. So I'm like, Lord, they're getting off tonight. <laughs> and, and even like at lunch, uh, I led the lady to, at the register at the convention, you know, and they're, where they're going to do the food to the Lord. And the other lady, I said, I prayed with you last year. She goes, yeah, you did. <laughs> and then the, there was a guy doing garbage, and I got to pray with him. And then a lady came to clean our room. I asked him to clean the room, and she came in, and I got to lead her to Jesus. So it was, like, so exciting. I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I heard these stuff last night. My spirit was like, woo! <laughs> no. But anyway, so he listened. God right. talks to us. He knows what he's doing. I'm telling you. Anyway, so there's another group of guys and I was like, oh, I'm out of tracks. And later I was like, did it matter? But anyway, I'm going to get them too. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. All right. So today we went to the hospital. Favorite and um, I really wanted to be spirit led today. So I ask God. Can you tell them why you wanted to be spirit led? Yeah. Can you share that with them? No. Okay. So I just, I, I, <laughs> so I was, and I just, it was like Peter. I was supposed to go to Peter. So I go, everyone go to the hospital. I'm like, oh Lord, I don't want to go to the hospital. <laughs> um, so we get to the hospital, and I just go right to the elevator, and I just heard a four. So I get in the elevator, I hit number four. I'm not even thinking about it. I'm kind of nervous. I get to the fourth floor, and I'm like, we're in the hospital. Doctors, nurses, and they're sick people. And I just start walking around. Any door that's open, I'm just kind of looking in and looking for somebody who's awake. So I go into this room. There's this lady laying there. And um, I just kind of like knew that her stomach area was hurting. And I went to the card with her. She prayed the prayer. And I said, you know, March 16th says that we will lay hands on the sick and they will be healed. And I said, your stomach hurts. She said, yes. And I said, your back right by your spine is really hurt she's like oh my yes and I prayed with her and I prayed for her healing and I said you know I was getting ready to leave and I said look um, God, I said, God loves you and I said you need to take your healing right now I said when I walk out of this room I said you need to move around and do things you haven't been able to do and she's like I'm gonna do it I'm gonna do it so I, I believe that she was healed today. Amen. And, then, and then I found when I get back to the elevator 
I didn't even realize fourth floor was the top floor. So I was at the top, and I went the whole way down, and we weren't even supposed to be in people's rooms. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that either. <laughs> so, I get down the next floor, and that was the ICU. It was oh. the intensive care unit, and there were some very, very sick people in there. And I come into a guy's room, and he was a very bad accident. I'm talking like his face was deformed. Nothing was where it should be. Wow. And um, he was awake and conscious, but he had a trait, you know, he was, he was very bad. And uh, I just laid hands on him and prayed with him. And I, when I opened my eyes, I looked at him. His whole countenance changed. Yeah. Um, you could see that life had came back in him. And I could hear him say, thank you. And he couldn't speak because he had, I, mean, I heard it with yeah. yeah. my ears. Oh, Amen. Amen. And, uh, and the last, last story, I got, finally got down to the second floor. And I saw and one of the other team. He's like, there's a guy back there that you can talk to. And I walk in, and, and I was with another guy, Justin. He's not here. And he was um, in a ball on a bed. And I said, sir, sir, you know. And he was non-responsive. And he just curled up in a ball. And um, we laid hands on him, starting to pray. And as soon as we laid hands on him, he left that bed six inches. Wow. Jumped. Bam. <laughs> and we prayed a little bit. And he woke up, and he started speaking in Spanish, like screaming. And I'm like, I'm looking. I'm like him in the car. I'm flipping it over, trying to hand him. And he's just like. And then Justin started praying back to him in tongues, and he kind of like looked at him like, <laughs> and I was like, have a nice day. <laughs>